Hey everybody, this is going to be the last video on Synthesizer V for a little bit. I've just been really digging in deep and I thought I would share the top three tips once you get past some of the basics that I recommend for using this inside Logic Pro. Keep in mind that uh, if you're not subscribed, you won't be notified of content like this. So definitely hit subscribe, that notification bell. If you're interested in some bonus content, we have a, a membership group on the channel. Uh, it's pretty small, which means we're doing a lot of really cool, intense things with just a, a group of really serious people. And if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one lessons as well, there's uh, links, all of that down in the description below. So Synthesizer V, if you haven't seen my other two videos I've done the last week or so, go check those out. One of them's a live stream where I really dig into this as a, really a new user. The next one I do a little bit more, and now I feel like I've logged just enough hours that I have to find some efficient ways of dealing with some of the quirks of this software. It's really cool. Let me play just what I'm working on here. Uh, so you can hear the context. I'm doing a, a, like a harmony part, like, so like the melody and harmony on a song I actually did on the channel, one of my uh, evening songwriting sessions. I've been replacing it. So let me mute this. I'll let you hear the original. Uh, it's really rough. I never actually did the final vocal yet, but you'll get an idea. Here's the original me part. The snow was falling. So that was the original part, and let me come through and turn on the vocal. So this is now the synthesizer V. It's not the exact part I originally sang, um, but I've gone through and edited a little bit. The and let me play the main transport. The snow was falling. So I'll be continuing it on, but that's as far as I've gotten. Tip number one is something that one of you pointed out to me that was so useful. Uh, it's using the breath sound. And I didn't know how to do this. It's not very clearly labeled anywhere. Let's see which of these tracks I put it on. I probably put it on the second track right here. So what we have is just this little note I added in extra. I'll do one here too as well, so you can see it. There we go. And so you can make that as long as you want. Uh, you just double click on it and type in BR. And so you end up with a breath sound. I love and so you can add that just subtle hint of realism inside the vocal. I think that that's actually super handy, being able to really quickly add in a breath wherever you want to, turn it up and down using the note properties, but uh, if we put this in the context of everything, it's right around bar nine. Night, I looked for hours. So you barely even hear it in that particular part, but it's there and it adds so much to the song. So that's tip number one, the BR note, which just adds breath whenever you need them. I'm sure there's some more of those that I'm gonna be discovering as I go along. Number two, uh, the scripts. Don't be afraid of the scripts. And I think in many ways, uh, they are a little tricky to kind of wrap your head around, but there's a couple of them that I think are just super useful. So say I've got this notes, series of notes that I'm playing in. I'm going to select them all. One of the scripts would be to, uh, let's see, remove short silences. I'm just going to threshold that all the way up. And now they become one like legato section. Instead of moving everything around, you can just select and do that. 
Uh, along with that, we have merge selected notes, play with smooth page turning, randomized parameters, which I found actually really useful if I get a bunch of vibrato I don't like. Uh, the sort silences removal, scale selected notes, that's a timing thing. Uh, silence, skipping, play, split, selected groups, split, selected notes. All of those are useful in different ways. I haven't used them all yet, but I'm really getting into the scripts and, and seeing how they can really help my workflow. So that's tip number two. Tip number three turns out to be, for me, one of the most important. You'll see I've got two different takes up here, two different vocal parts. Each of those can have their own voice and each have their own notes and all the parameters. And so that's really useful. At first I was doing this and then just panning and changing the level in here, but I'm going to see if I, let's put those back at zero for now. When you come and load this for the very first time, what you should do is load up the multi output, which gives us 16 stereo outputs from there. That's what I've got right now. The little plus shows up down here and you hit plus and you can add additional tracks. So I could do another one if I wanted to. Now I've got one, two, three, let's just go back to two. And uh, with those two, I've got the voices. Now at first glance, nothing changes. Uh, until you go in and make some setting adjustments. And so I have to go into my settings, and here in the settings, you have to go to where it says audio. If it's closed, it'll look like this, but you just have to click on it to open it. The default is master combined, and that sends it out just the first of those outputs, but I'm doing track combined. And so once I turn that on, then the voices come out each of these different tracks. The snow. And with this, then we can actually take these and process them independently, uh, send them out to reverb. We could do so much with this that I think is really useful. So right now that second one is not going out a reverb, but let's send it out one. The snow was falling into the winter night. And here then, we can actually pan them, we can add compression to them, we can do, I actually just threw on as an example, pitch correction and compression, just to show you that this becomes then a way to process those voices how we might want to. In fact, one of my favorite things to doing uh, with this is to do the Oak Sound uh, spiff, which um, is really useful, or we could be doing um, Soothe 2. Now, both of these are very different. With Spiff, I like being able to remove certain things from this. We have a bunch of different presets for this, some, such as de-clicking, uh, removing mouth clicks. So let me just show that one real quick. The snow was falling into So we get rid of some of the weird artifacts with this one. And with Soothe 2, of course, there's so much that this does uh, in terms of balancing out some of the expectations of the frequencies. Uh, it, I mean, this is just an amazing tool. The snow was falling into the winter night. voice synthesizer perfect? Of course not. Every once in a while, there's still words and syllables that sound like uh, they don't belong, but it's getting better and I'm getting better using it. 
I think perhaps the last bonus tip is just to use it a bunch and learn how to make it better. I'm still getting there. I think that um, this particular example for me was something I was really interested in, the harmonies, and it doesn't sound bad. There's a lot of really good things with this, considering it's just a bunch of notes that I've typed keys to make the words. Okay, that's it for this tip video. I hope this was helpful. And um, I promise until we get more voices to mess around with, this is the last one.